Hello everybody! In this session we are going to be looking at what is compression. So I always think it's quite easy to remember what compression is because we can think of it like crushing a can. So if you've had a can of coke, something like that, finish with your can, you will often, with shoes, crush that can and then you will recycle it. But when you crush it down, you've still got the whole can there, but you've made it smaller so it takes up less space. And that is what compression is. But there's different forms of compression, so we need to talk about that. So in terms of a definition, you're reducing the file size, but you're trying to keep the file as true to the original as possible. And there's different reasons why you would compress a file. The main one is just so it takes up less space on your secondary storage device. So let's say you've got a hard drive in your computer and you want to store as many files as possible on there. So the files are going to be compressed so that you can store the maximum amount possible. In addition to that, if you're going to download something from the internet, it's going to be much faster. If it takes up less storage, then the file itself will download faster. So I'm not sure how many of you have tried to attach files to an email. There's actually a maximum of 25 megabytes that you can attach to an email. If you have got smaller files, you'll be able to fit more files onto the email as an attachment. And finally, if you're on the internet using a browser, the web pages themselves will actually load quicker if they've got smaller file sizes and less information to pull down. So I mentioned earlier, we've got two different types of compression. Now your two different types are lossy, and lossless compression. Let's have a look at lossy compression first. Now if you've got a file such as a JPEG, which is an image file, lossy compression will actually reduce the number of colors available in that image. So it'll reduce the amount of bits needed per pixel. That's the color depth that we were talking about in our image representation video. So less bits available per pixel means that there will be less colors available per pixel. But because there's now less colors available, it means that the image itself won't look as clear because the colors aren't gonna be as accurate to the original actual color. But because there's less binary information per pixel, it is gonna reduce the overall file size. The other thing that happens during lossy compression is the actual overall number of pixels could be reduced. Now, when you're using certain software, you can actually choose how much compression you want to apply to an image when you are saving it or a different file. So if you're gonna heavily compress it, it's gonna really reduce the file size by a lot. However, the more you compress an image, it's gonna look less and less like the original, but it will have a smaller file size because overall you've got less pixels and colors available. So obviously it comes with some advantages having a smaller file size and using lossy compression, you can store more files. And the, often the images which are compressed like this, like a JPEG, are compatible with most software. So you can open it on pretty much piece of, any piece of software you've got on your computer. And with the small file size, it means that it can also be downloaded really quickly. As mentioned though, it does come with some disadvantages as well. So once the data has been removed, it is actually gone permanently. So if you reduce the amount of pixels, you can't get those back and it will have lower quality overall. And lossy compression can't actually be applied to a text file. Now that seems like a, a weird point to make, but in the past it's asked in an exam, which would be the most appropriate type of compression to use on a text file? And you wouldn't have been able to choose lossy compression as your answer, because if lossy compression was applied to a text file, it would actually be missing information from that text file. So if you are asked a question like that in your exam, you cannot apply lossy compression to text files. So the other type of compression we've got is lossless compression. Now this is kind of similar to my analogy before about the can of coke. So lossless compression temporarily removes data from a file and then restores it when it's opened. So it's a bit like if you can think of it crushing down and then if you need it, you then open it again. That's like lossless compression. Now the way it does this is by remembering the information from the file in a bit of a different way. So it will follow an algorithm so it knows what information is stored about that file. So if we were talking about an image file such as a PNG, that's an example of lossless compression. Now if the next 50 pixels were all red, rather than saying red pixel, red pixel, red pixel, red pixel, it would just say 50 red pixels, which is gonna reduce the number of binary information that's needed to store 
that image file. But then when it comes to actually recreating that image, if it was suddenly in use, it would know exactly what information to include in that image because all of the information is right there. It's just stored in a bit of a different way because of the algorithm. And the proper name for that method is called run length encoding, but you don't really need to know that for your exam. All you need to know is that it temporarily removes the data and then it will restore it when the file is in use and it's been opened. Again, it comes with some advantages and disadvantages. So the biggest advantage is that there's no reduction in quality. It will look or sound as true to the original as possible. You can use it on text files and obviously it can be decompressed back to its original form. Disadvantages, it will reduce the file size, but nowhere near as much as lossy compression will reduce the file size and they will take longer to download because they've got that larger file size. Okay, so some exam questions to practice on this topic. So Mr. Moore wants to compress a text file. Which type of compression is the most appropriate? Justify your answer. Explain why Mr. Moore might want to compress his audio files. And finally, explain why lossy compression is suitable for a video clip, but it is not suitable for a text document. So as always, give them a go before checking back on your notes or on this video. And if you're not quite sure, obviously rewatch the video or check back on your notes. That's it for this session. See you next time.